What's up, YouTube? I'm here with Garrison. We're going to talk about his uh, Bant Scape Shift deck. And we've got the list on the right side of the screen. Let's go ahead and pause that if you want to copy the list down. And now that you've unpaused the video, <laughs> we're going to go in and talk about the cards. So, first up, we've got four Arboreal Grazers. So, just quick comments about each card, I yeah, guess. Yeah, it's, I mean, really, it's like if you have the basic forest or the shock, green, the yeah. shock, the green yeah. shock. You play it, make a you know your second land drop. Make your second land drop. It's also a good blocker for aggro matches. Yeah. Yep. And do you do you even care if it dies? Uh, sometimes because you just need to protect the fairy if you have it. Okay. Hand. But like nine times out of ten, no. Okay. And then we got four elvish rejuvenators. That's a four. I think yep. I did a three. Um, now you you actually like this over risen reef in your previous yeah. version of the deck. Yeah. Why is that? Uh, just a second, it digs five cards deep and finds you another land, where mm -hmm. Risen Reef is kind of finding you a random one, card. Yeah. Like, you're looking for lands, and you're specifically looking for Field of the Dead. Uh, yeah, so and this is one shot. of the few ways the deck can yeah. actually put that into play outside of drawing it. So, and uh, you feel like you don't really get a whole lot of value with Risen Reef unless it sits on the battlefield. This yeah. way, you, you get the value, and you and can then throw it under the bus. Yeah, you don't yep. care if it dies. Uh, and then we have, this is the change this week. So yep. we've got four Hydroid Crisis. Uh, and this is in place of the Risen Reef. So when we did the previous yeah. deck tech, you had said this is the weakest card in the deck. Yep, and I think everybody agrees. Yeah, I think everybody really, agreed. Risen Reef was the weakest card. Super good in the deck. Elementals deck. Horrible in this deck. Yeah, not yeah. horrible, but... Uh, we did make one, one other change. I think last week uh, I was yep. playing three Arboreal Grazers. Yes, we were that's playing true. The fourth, playing the fourth one. And that, we did go down one other card, though. We'll see yep. later. Um, yeah. Any comments about this? I mean, so basically, if you're playing Risen Reef on one... Or on three, yeah. This that's the only instance where it's better than the Crassus, right? Yeah, um, and that's even debatable. Yeah, I think like the point of the fact is that it's like you're getting a body, you're drawing a card, and the thing about this is you're gaining life, which is that's relevant. The relevant and, yeah. part for a lot of the matchups. Well, and like anytime you have six mana, it's better to draw this than the Reef. Yeah. The other thing about it is that the which Reef is only three. the Reef is only triggering off of another Reef. Right. So you have to draw the Reef in multiples. This you could actually just cast a Crisis for yep. four. Yep. And then you'll restock. And I guess another comment that's worth mentioning is this is another win condition for the deck. Yeah. I actually, um, and we'll get to in the sideboarding. We'll get to talking about yeah. that. Uh, so next we have four Baby to Fairy Time yep. Ravelers. It's just a good card. <laughs> it's right. I mean, it answers things. It lets you cast Scape Shift on their turn. He's not going anywhere. Yeah, tempo um, is a uh, is a big thing for this deck. Yeah, like keeping your tempo going for yep. what you're doing. Yep. So play him, bounce something, draw yep. a card, and then allowing you to cast so sorceries yep. and importantly slowing them down too. Yeah, uh, the feather matchup. Yep, they can't cast it. anything out of the graveyard. Yeah, yep. and we actually talked about that in, in the deck tech video with the so feather the other, deck. The feather deck tech video. Yep. yep, the arcanist can't flash things back anymore because yep. you can't cast. Yep, pretty good. So we've got a bunch of ramp spells. Uh, that's what this deck wants to do. Yep. So four circuitous route, um, search two lands, two basic lands or gates. Then we've got four growth spirals. Yep. Um, you know, draw a card, basically play an extra land. Three growth from the ashes. Now, what's worth noting here is that these lands come into play untapped. Yep. And there was a video I think tonight that you were doing some math in your head. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you play this and you don't kick it, you get the one extra land to play the grazer. To play an extra land. Yeah, there's definitely so, there's definitely some hard math with Grow from the Ashes. Yeah. I say hard math. It's a lot more What's thinking. Yeah. yeah. Is it worth casting this on three and then getting to my fifth land? It effectively did the same. Yeah, there's a lot of times where if you have like if you have Grow from the Ashes and Circuit Destroy, you don't have your fourth land drop. Mm -hmm. You just cast Grow for three. Yeah. So that you guarantee you can cast Circuit Destroy next turn. Yep. And then we have two drawn from dreams. I think you were at three last. Yeah, week, right? this is the this is so the you other change. one of these out to put in the grazer. Yeah, and and it was basically just the fact that I almost always want to. You almost always want to have the grazer on one if you can, mm -hmm. or if you have to play the tap land, that you can go on turn two, pull your grazer, and play an additional land on top of that. Yeah. So helps grazer you get is to five. Grazer is kind of like land of war elf. Uh, yeah, in a sense, except yeah. it blocks way better than land of war elf. <laughs> it doesn't attack as well. <laughs> yeah, 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 I guess. All right, then we have the namesake card of the yeah. deck, four scape shifts. Um, so let's talk about this for a minute because in almost every <laughs> single scape shift video deck or deck video, yep. uh, we have someone saying, well, that's the seventh land, that's the eighth land, there's only two zombie triggers. So the way this works, on resolution of the spell is when you sacrifice land. So if you counterspell it, they're not sacrificing a whole yep. bunch of stuff and losing all their permanents. When those lands come into play, they all enter the battlefield at the same time. 
So that means that the four field of the dead and the six other lands, they all see each other. So for every land that enters and every field of the dead, there's yep. a trigger. So if you're escape shifting, for, I think you escape shifted for eight at one point and you actually did the math wrong. Yeah, that's because I counted the field as yeah. one. So there was four two. fields, yep. but there was eight lands entering the battlefield. Yep. And that's 32 triggers. That is exactly how this works. It's a modern deck as well as a standard deck right now. Yeah. Uh, Seizes so Valakut, the Molten Pinnacle. Yep. And that basically, it's uh, three damage per land, right? Uh, it's three damage per other mountain. Yeah. So there, okay, so it's other mountains. So yeah, that, yeah. So if you did that, turn it into a mountain, it is yeah. three damage for each other mountain beyond the fifth. Yeah. Actually. So that's a little so, different than the field of the dead, because that's yeah. not other lands. And the thing to note is that, yeah, it's the field of the dead isn't, the field of the dead is not other lands. Correct. Um, and I think that's where, like, a big. A lot of people get hung up on that, too. Yeah, the, the fact that, like, oh, well, you only have six. When you play the seventh yep. one, it, it's not that case because Field of the Dead says when you play Field of the Dead, when Field of the Dead enters Bevo or another uh, land. Or another land, yeah. So. Um, and then the other thing that I do want to mention here so if you're playing against a Scape Shift deck, and I don't think you'll ever fall into this trap, <laughs> uh, so it also checks upon resolution of the ability if it's making zombies. So if they have exactly seven named lands, and you have some way to destroy a land, like Field of Ruin. Yeah. You destroy one of their lands, and they can't fetch out a uniquely named basic. Yeah. All of those triggers will fail. Uh, so that's definitely worth noting if you're playing against it. Yeah, the thing, and that's uh, that's one of the reasons that you play, like this deck especially, is play like one island, one, one plane, plane, and then three. We aren't at the points. lands yet. I know. Spoiler alert. But it's very, very relevant. It here. is relevant. Because you typically only find two if you can do mm -hmm. it, unless you're at, like, say, eight or nine lands. Yeah. And you're doubling up. Yeah, and if you have eight land names, it doesn't even matter anymore. Right. They right. can blow up whatever, and you're fine. Yeah. Um, so let's move on. We've kind of talked about Scape Shift a lot. So we've got a whole bunch of lands yeah, here. Yeah. One Azorius Guildgate, one Blossoming Sands. That gains you a life. Yeah. I actually um, think I... That actually changed. That changed this week. Okay. Um, I'm not playing the Blossoming Sands. I'm playing Thornwood Falls. Okay, so the it's blue the green, blue -green, -green yep. game life land. So it's still a game life land. Okay. Um, but the blue... So he gave me a bad list earlier this week. So, yeah, my, my apologies. That was actually the last second change, yep. so... And now, in true garrison fashion, I use the artwork, <laughs> the expedition, so four breeding pools. Yeah. Um, four field of the dead, kind of can't have the deck without them. Yep. Uh, three beta forests, even though you're not running... I'm not playing my betas, um, I, because I'm playing foil OG Zendikars. <sighs> All right. So. so we got one glacial fortress, two... Hallowed Fountains, yep. but you, you're a peasant. You don't own them. Yeah, I don't own that one. Not yet. Man. <laughs> one Hinterland Harbor, one Beta Island. It's not Beta for real, though. One yep. Beta Plains. It's not not Beta for real. Yep. Uh, one Celestia Guildgate, two Simic Guildgates. So this is where you'd have the Thornwood Falls instead of the Blossoming Sands. Um, and then one Sun Petal Grove. Yep. One Temple Guard. Do you yep. have that artwork? I do. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yep. Two Temple of Mystery, because scrying is always good. Yep. One Tranquil Cove, because gaining life is good. All right, so these are the sideboard yep. cards. So we were debating on, well, we were not really debating. We were trying to figure out, how do you beat this deck? And we were coming up with Alpine Moon, uh, Naming Field of the Dead, and what was the other red card? Uh, Blood Sun. Blood Sun. And then, turns out, Ashiok does a pretty good job, because they can't basically search for any lands. They can't, yeah. Yeah, like, so... The minus ability probably won't even be used, and honestly, I'd probably leave it at five so it has more damage yeah. that you have to get through to get rid of them. But it slows them down a lot. Um, so why is it in this sideboard, Garrison? Um, it's, a, <laughs> it's in this sideboard because I'm afraid of the mirror. Yeah. Uh, it turns out I don't think anybody here will play it. No, um, I think you're it, safe in this metagame. I think it is correct to play it, though. Yeah, I like build the sideboard for tonight on the premise of doing something like this to kind of show what's out there yeah um and one one comment i made with trey in our deck tech video was lsv one uh magic fest denver playing basically this same deck list yep. um so that really put it on the map so you're probably going to start seeing people playing it and we'll talk about rotation at right. the end of the video and that's like a, the thing to this is that i never played the mirror i play a lot of this deck on arena mm -hmm. like i play a lot of this deck he Never doesn't stream it, it, Don't stream it, though. Sorry. Not yet. I should be it. just streaming it. Um, I actually don't even post a lot of videos about no. this either. I but, told him uh, to only to record every <laughs> single one and only record the good, yeah. or only upload the good ones. And I'm bad about that. But uh, I actually came up against the mirror for the first time. I've been playing this deck since 
uh, Field of the Dead. Since M20 dropped on Arena. Since I told him to play it and he told me it was bad. Yeah, and then I found somebody else who played it and they made a good deck list, but um, I I came up against it the first time this week, and it was like two or three days ago where I played against the Mirror, and uh, it It really just comes down to who gets to make more zombies. Uh, Yes, but it actually comes to who resolves the second scape shift. Yeah. So, but um, like best of three, I really, really wanted Ashiok. Yeah. Just for that, and there, I guess there is a point. Like, if you do have a board state, you can start minusing just to mill their cards over too. Sure, I mean you're um, ramping your pulling cards out of the deck. So yeah, and it, then it is a possibility that if if you can minus a whole bunch of times, that you can deck them. Yeah, the the decking's yeah. real, and then you also have the fact that like um, you're getting rid of like their lands are turned on with mm-hmm. Field of the Dead. So maybe you hit a Field of the Dead, but you also yeah. start to exile their win conditions. Yes, and actually in zombies. The sideboarding, we'll talk about why you want to exile their graveyard. Yep. So then we have... Oh, man, it's right here. Okay, it's a Crucible yeah. of Worlds. It's yep. one of them. Uh, I don't own the Masterpiece Crucible. Peasant. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, anyways, um, if you're going to be scape shifting and bringing lands back with the Crucible of Worlds, it's a really good plan to exile their graveyard. Yeah, and there's been... Uh, I've seen a couple of streams of people talking about the fact that it's like, Crucible of Worlds is a trap. Um, and it's a trap. Yeah, I guess, I guess it's a trap. But uh, I mean, three mana. So like, there's an odd point in time where you're like you scape shift once, and you draw. I had a day. I went like gross spiral, gross spiral into arboreal grazer, mm-hmm. and I really just wanted a land. Yeah. Crucible it turns out when a land makes four two two zombies and can't yeah. counter, it's yeah. actually a good top. Yeah. Deck. And if you keep I doing it, keep deck. doing it every time. And if they happen to feel the ruin, you feel the dead. Yeah. You can get, you can it, get back. it back. Yep. Uh, so then we've got two Dovin's Vetoes. Wow, it's really hard to see the two in that artwork, huh? Yeah, I didn't realize that. Yeah, me either. So, uh, obviously coming in against control decks or something. Yeah, this is an addition to the uh, another card that was in the sideboard that we were playing last week. Um, I really just wanted another counter, but I did not want to run four of yeah. that same counter. Which is... So, oh, no, it's, it's not the next it's card. It's not the next card because nope. they're alphabetized. Yeah. So this is one Graph Digger's Cage. Um, yep. I, it shuts down things in the graveyard. Yeah. Uh, in the library. Phoenix. Yeah. Uh, it turns out I actually hosed a Feather deck tonight. I resolved the, this. Yeah, you can't cast and things in the he graveyard. did not do a thing. Yeah. It also um, hosed... I really like it. It sounds dumb. I like it against Mono Red when they're playing Experimental Frenzy. Can't cast yeah. anything in the library. Yeah. Can't cast from your hand. Yep, and it and being that it's one mana is also fairly relevant after sideboard because if you don't have the Arboro Grazer, it does just give you a one mana play if you have like your basic land. Yeah, you can play it. Yep. Uh, then we have two negates. Yep. These are the additional to the vetoes. Yep. So yep. why two negates and not just four vetoes? Um, the awkward mana base. Okay. So really, the white is harder to, mm-hmm. to get to. I think there's like. You have to go back and look. There's like only like seven oh. white sources, I think. Oh yeah, we, I mean we can cycle back through and go to yeah. the deck list. Not that we care. So Prison Realm, uh, you weren't running this last week. LSV was running it in his main deck. Yep. Um, and you really want this for um, hitting Ashioks. Yeah, uh, hitting and Ashioks. Obviously threats. Uh, hitting your, uh, in the mirror, hitting your opponent's Teferi uh, mm-hmm. is actually very very relevant, um, giving you a chance to be able to do that. And then you this Scry Trigger off of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually dealt with a uh, very large creature that I had no other way to deal with. Yep. With the prison realms, uh, so I mean, it, it's it's, just it's a versatile card. removal spell. It gives you some selection, and I think hitting opposing planeswalkers is really what you're doing with that. Yeah, card. I have no other way to deal with them. Yeah. And then so. this card, debatably the best card in M20. Um, yeah, it's shaking up formats. Veil of Summer. Um, you're putting this in against control decks, I assume. Yeah. Uh, so make flash. It, well, it's control decks, and then like um, I guess some like blue blue cell tempo decks. Mm-hmm. Um, whether it be mono blue or simic, yeah, uh, just the, the flash. Deck. The fact that you still you need to draw a card, yeah. So like, there's there's a very relevant part because you want to draw a lot of cards. Yep. So so we're gonna move on. I think that's the last of the sideboard. So we've got sideboard guide. We did forget to put the which matchup. Oh, the flash matchup. Uh, no, the flash matchup is the same sideboard as the mono blue. Okay. So the, so against yeah. mono red. We're not doing anything. So run the same 60. Yeah, just, like, pretend to put some stuff in and just take it right back out if you want to give them some mental games. I, yeah, I guess. Or just I, be like, I don't need to sideboard. I have not found a match. 
me personally. It's not saying it's 100% correct, but uh, I just have not found a match against Mono Red where I wanted to change everything because everything in my deck is good mm -hmm. against Mono Red. I guess the only thing that I might think about is the cage because it shuts down Frenzy so well, but you can generally just go over the top, uh, I think. Like, the my way of dealing with the Frenzy has just been Teferi. Yeah. And that, like... Yeah. Get you. Bounce it back, they had to spend a whole other turn playing the, yeah. the Frenzy out. So. so then we got the Mono Blue, which we're going to also say is the same as Simic Flash. So if you're playing against that deck, sideboard the same way. Yeah. And you want... Well, I'll let you read them. Uh, so you're bringing in the Three Bill of Summer. That's really the only thing in the sideboard that, that, you I, want. that I think is even good. You you can't bring the counters in. Uh, they just have more than you do. And uh, it's just kind of trimming. Um, and a lot of the guide is just trimming. You're down a Rejuvenator, a Circuitous Route, and a Grow from the Ashes. Um, your four mana spells um, often are not going to resolve, but the thing to know is I guess there's a difference in this versus a lot of the other matchups is the Draw from Dreams. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm playing Draw from Dreams in the main because our local meta, yeah, I think it's a way better card than the Prison Realm is. Um, but having that extra selection to be able to find these and then. Leaving the Drawn from Dreams in against Mono Blue. If they countered that, that's fine, because they're not countering Escape Shift. Yep. So So then we go on to Mono White. Yeah. And uh, so here, bringing in three Prison Realms, and uh, taking out the two Drawn from Dreams, and one of the Circuit Disrupts, again, the four mana spells are kind of awkward. You don't have time to cast Drawn from Dreams. This is really what comes out. Like, if you're casting Drawn from Dreams, you're probably dead against yeah. the Mono White. On turn four. Yeah. Yeah. Or I guess turn two, if you... Have a really good draw. Yeah, well, and the, ridiculous. yeah. The hard part about draw from dreams is you're typically not casting it on a four. No. You're like casting it on a five or six. Yeah, and you trying to get you don't want to out of it. Cluttering up your hand and yeah, dying. Yeah. Uh, then the is it Phoenix matchup. Yep. Yeah, uh, so plus the the one graft digger's cage mm -hmm. and then the uh, three prison realms. So the realm just to deal with either a very large Drake um, or. The Phoenix. The Phoenix, uh, and actually very relevant is the Electromancer, because it turns on so much of their deck. Um, and then, uh, obviously, Grafdigger's Cage, if they're ditching Phoenixes, they can't get them back. Yep. So, uh, taking out the Drawn from Dreams, same reason as the uh, the Mono White version. So, taking out Escape Shift is interesting. Yeah, um, it's that four mana. Okay, um, just trying to lower your curve. Yeah, like, you you have inevitability with the deck. Mm -hmm. Um because when you get to a certain point, every single card that you draw, aside from maybe like Arboreal Grazer, is a live draw. Yeah. Uh, Even lands. Yeah, you know, lands, lands make, come in and make a bunch of zombies. I think you made, you, like, you made the mention of like every land that turns into eight power and eight toughness. Yeah, sure. And so, you can't counter it. Like, right. You can't interact with it. I right. guess you could tail's end one trigger. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. that's not even good. Yeah, that's about it. So, so. Um, and then just, just trimming on the four mana uh, Circuitous route, uh, because of this matchup, the I feel that the um, Grow from the Ashes is better placed than the Circus Route because you can grow for three to get a basic mm -hmm. and then get you up to your five, six, seven mm -hmm. to start generating some zombies and trying to kill them fast. And then our Esper here, this is a boogeyman of the format, right? Yeah. It's uh, everywhere. Yeah, this is a very awkward matchup and it's very, it's very interesting. So it's like the... Plus two negates, plus two Dovin's vetoes, and then the they all start uh, veil of summer. So mm -hmm. um, you're you're playing against heroes. You're probably playing against some number of Dovin's vetoes, which makes it very awkward for you to play counters. Playing the veil of summer helps out tremendously. I think we saw that you and I last week. Oh yeah, you had three in a row. Yeah, something like and that. And then the negate. But that was like, but the veil of summer was really the what stood out from yeah. that. Even the negate, like yeah. Well, it lets you draw a card too, which is yep. super relevant. One green draw a card. Yeah, and there's no. So. There's, there's, I shouldn't say there's no card draw because there is, but there's very little. Well, there's the crisis, and there's the fairy. Yeah, and you draw spiral. And yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, you taking out here, it's minus the two scape shifts, um, and then taking out all the circuitous routes. Uh, and then minus a grow from ashes. So, so you're, you're actually moving away from the ramp plan. Yeah, uh, and you're, you're going more of a protect my stuff plan. Yeah. Uh, the, so the the problem is is that the hero deck plays Kai's Wrath, and then um, oh post sideboard you yeah post sideboard you also tend to see stuff That's like um, Cry of the Carnarium. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's more or less the fact that like you need to protect against the wrath spells. And not necessarily scape shifting. Most of their decks, you want to scape shift one big turn, yeah, kill them the following turn. Yeah. This time, you actually have to have like value scape shifts. 
Um, well, and I suppose you want to protect them with the counters, so... Yeah, so you're, you're, not, you're not tapping out and yeah. sacrificing nine lands like when the boy tapped. Uh, you're, you know, maybe casting four seconds those four lands if you need to, kind of find some... Make, make a couple of zombies. You can kill people with, you know, six yeah. power. And we're going to talk about... In a minute here. Oh, yeah? Yeah. 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 So, uh... So, in the mirror match. Yeah. Here's what both of you will be doing. <laughs> yeah, and, and this is... I think this... And it's all dependent based on, like, what you're... Yeah, and if you just happen to know their list... They, yeah, oh well, yeah. whatever. Um, but it's like, you know, plus the three Prison Realms, plus the three Ashioks. Yep. Um, minus two Teferi, two Arboreal Grazer, one Girl from the Ashes, one Girl Sprout. Did not mention, like, this is where plus one Crucible Worlds, and you can kind yep. of, like, a flex spot, I guess. Yep. Um, if, you, if you feel like you... Like, we don't know the one more card you take out. Unless, yeah, and it was really hard. It's, to come it's hard to six. come up with the six. Yep. Um... And it, it may be, I, I don't think you can not put in the Prison Realms or the Ashioks. Right. Um, so you really got to find a seventh card to pull out, which is tough. Um, we kind of decided Growth Spiral was the weakest link in yeah. the ramp aspect because it's conditional. You have to have the land in hand. Yep. Um, pulling out more Grazers just slows you down off the gates. So it's it's very awkward. Yeah, this, this is a very... Um... <sighs> It's very relevant to, like, minusing escape shifts. So the thing to remember, and this is what people, I guess, in the mirror don't think about, is they think it's a race. Mm -hmm. um, and they they just go to the, well, if I'm the first person to cast my escape shift, and I make a bunch of zombies, I'm going to win. And that's not the case. Um, I think it's probably better than 80% of the time. The second person to cast their escape shift is the one who's going to win. Yeah, they have more zombies because they have more lands. Correct. Yeah. So um, on top of the fact that, like, if, they're, if you're attacking with all your zombies first, there's the possibility that they start to pick them off one by one because you do have the one ones, uh, and you can block with the zero three. Uh, so there's a couple of things that you can play that to fairy bounce a token, those sorts of things. So, yep. So the Ashioks are coming in here to prevent them from ramping. Um, if you know they're doing that, do you feel like maybe the one pulling out one scape shift or no? Um, see. So, it's very hard because it's a it's a case like if you know that they're bringing in Ashiox, um, you can't bring in the Crucible Worlds. I mean, it, theoretically, like yeah. you're skip shifting and they're like gonna, it's, it's, it's kind of a non-bow. Yeah, you. But if there. you get rid of their, it's it is a very I you would have to like get rid of their Ashiok and not do any and not cast any scape shifts. Right, and then at that point you could really take over the game. I think, but. Again, that's almost going to like a control band shift yeah. gear type and you thing. You can't do that with this without changing probably yeah. some of the ball for like nine cards. Yeah. Um, I guess there could be uh, so like there could be the whole play draw dependent yeah, um, sure. matchup as well. So like um, if you're on the play, uh, you could make I guess the concession to leave a grazer in. Okay. Um, you have that turn one, so like on turn two, if you just have your tap lines, you do get to get that additional piece of ramp. Yeah. Um, and maybe you, like at that point you go down a growth spiral. Uh, so so it, there's a lot of play draw dependent. I think matches yeah. here. I think I did write one up we were talking about. It, and I don't remember uh, what deck I was talking about as play draw dependent. I don't I can't remember. remember. I don't remember. We didn't have any sort of play or draw sideboard plans for these. No. So. Uh, Alright, well, let's move on. Boros Feather. Yep. Um, Trey seems to think it's the best deck in the format. I, I don't really think it is. It's, it's funny because... It's explosive, uh, but... I played two tonight. Um, I lost to one of them, and uh, I think if I'd have, I think if I'd have drawn Teferi, that the game was mine to lose. In, in all reality, and then uh, you have to watch one of the matches, so I also did draw... I, I had the wrong lands. Not that I mm. fetched the wrong lands... Just but the I couldn't draw get, just didn't work. Yeah, out. I couldn't get to seven unique unique names. Yep. Um, I drew multiples of my my basics, and then I drew multiples of the field of it. So I wasn't able to put pressure on them early to put them on the back foot, and that's really um, unfortunately you want to be putting pressure on them. Mm -hmm. um, you can't survive one for one in their creature with your one one. Their guy gets big fast. Yeah, well, so, they all have more than one toughness. Yeah. So. Well, it's like, let's just say, like, normally you can throw two one ones in front of something. Sure. You can't with the feather deck. So it's immediately like. Uh, Three prison realms. Prison realms, yeah. And then one Graft Digger's Cage. And what's cool about the Graft Digger's Cage, I, 
we probably already said it in this video. Yeah, yeah. But they can't flashback things with the Arcanist. Yeah, and shutting um, down, shutting that down is... Uh, that's their engine, really. Yeah. Like, sure, you get to draw a card when you cast Defiant Strike, but you don't get to draw cards that don't cost you cards anymore. Yeah. Uh, so they can't really fill their hand up too one, much. One game on camera where my opponent, like, played his Feather, and he cast his Defiant Strike, and then Exile, got it back, cast his Defiant Strike, and he had a whole bunch of other triggers... Um, but prior to that was playing Arcanist and then living off of the Arcanist where mm -hmm. he's casting a spell and getting really good value off of that. Um, he probably would have drawn, I don't know, drawn or stride three or four or five cards I think less. there was a point where he had to discard, wasn't there? Yeah. 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 So, like, yeah. and that, so that becomes tells relevant. You, yeah. So. And then you're putting in, it looks like, two Circuitous Route and two Drawn. No, taking out oh, two sorry. Circuitous Routes out, and yes, two Drawn from the Dreams. Um, the, the Drawn from Dreams here, uh, I love the card. But it's just way too slow. Mm -hmm. It is a sorcery, so like you pretty much to fairy. You really don't good, want that card in the deck when you're playing against aggro. Yeah, against mm -hmm. a super aggro yeah. deck. Uh, so and then the search again is just like the four mana. Uh, we gonna you do have to leave escape ships in here though. Uh, I feel like it's one hundred percent. It you have to leave all four in for the simple fact that that is your win condition. Um, I had one turn. Well, oh, Crassus can win, but yes. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah I guess so. It's uh. I had a point where if I cast a big Crassus, it didn't save me. Mm -hmm. But if I scape shifted, I could block everything that yeah. they had on the ground, and then all I'm doing is taking three from Feather. Yep. So, and then our last one that we typed up here was uh, Bant Ramp, and it's also Simic Steel, which is uh, it's the deck with Agent of Treachery that's floating around. Uh, no, Simic Steel. So it'd be like your uh, I don't, maybe it does play maybe it does play Agent of Treachery too. Uh, more of the um, Entrancing Melody. Entrancing Melody and the, uh, what's the other one? The Four Blue XX. Sure. Whatever card yeah. it is. Um, they're just trying to take all your stuff. You just gotta stop them from taking all your stuff. And interesting here, uh, you're taking out the Crassus so they don't steal it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you don't typically play Crassus unless it's like a 6-6, six, 7-7, six, yeah. yeah, something it turns like out that. They can get a clock from that one. Yeah. Uh, when they go uh, X equals 2 on an Entrancing Melody and they take your 10-10, yeah, uh, you're dead. Really bad. <laughs> so... Uh, the thing is trample, so we don't want to die to our own crasses this way. Yep. So we're putting in the two negates, two Dovin's vetoes, and three Veil of Summers. Um, the negates and the vetoes are strictly for uh, the Nissa, okay. and the um, the steel. Yeah, the steel effects, steel the effects you or whatever yep. else it is. So um, you just like you need to be able to stop the Nissa from hitting the battlefield. So that's why we're putting all four of them in. Uh, and then uh, they do play some of counters, which is the other reason to have the, the veto. Veils and uh, and veil. have yeah. as well the uh, the Veil of Summers. So you want to make sure that your negates get turned on, essentially turning into Dovin's Vetoes for one blue and a, a generic. Um, and then, of course, Veil of Summer, they're just playing blue green. They play a lot of blue cards that are in the deck. So yep. you can also just cycle the Veil later in the game if you absolutely have to. Yep. And we're pulling out, like we said, four Crassus and then a Scape Shift, a Grazer, and a Circus. Right? Yeah, and this is more or less just. Um, trimming a little bit so uh their early threats are all ramp cards so and i say early threats because you have incubation druid uh like i guess paradise druid um some instances in land nowhere else the the arboreal grazer is not blocking like it's just not on blocking duty until they get later in the game so kind of trim that one down uh, you don't much care for that so and then again the four minutes so if you hit one scape shift in this match you're either one or they're going to untap and take everything. Yeah, they're going to cast. It's a transing <laughs> melody. Is blue blue X. They gain one. They gain one card. It's and that's manipulation. Okay, that's that's, that's four blue and X X. X. Yeah. So turns out when you're taking zombie tokens, X is zero, right? Or is it number? Of and, tra and transing melody is the zero one. Okay. They, that's one creature. But yeah, it's it's number of permanents for that. But it turns out when they go like four blue, pay sixteen. Take eight of your zombie yeah. tokens. Okay, I thought it was CMC. Never no, yeah, 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 yeah. But it, it, it is one of those things. If you can yeah. protect your guys, yeah. Veil of Summer protects very well. So all right, so I'm gonna put the list back up. The we've been asked a few times in the comments, like, should I build this deck? Scape Shift is rotating. Uh, I actually think the deck can survive rotation. We're almost for sure gonna get another ramp spell or two in the next set. Yeah. Um, and what are you losing? You're losing Rejuvenator, right? And you're losing... You lose scape shift. Well, yeah, you lose scape shift. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, like... Oh, you mean for the rest of the deck? Yeah. Uh, like, lands are... Lands are who cares, because we're going to get more lands. What's the in? Uh, I don't even know what set it's in. Here, we can go through it. So, keep, lose, yep. keep, keep, 
Keep, keep. Yeah, you lose Grow from the Ashes. ashes. Okay. Um, so you lose two ramp spell. Well, you lose Grow, the Scape Shift, and a creature that. The Rejuvenator, which can be easily. Yeah, replaced. you can. You can you put can the Rizzer Reef, Reef back in. in. Yep. Um. So there was games against me where you didn't ever Scape Shift, and actually, <laughs> there's your Cyber Plan takes them out in some matchups. Yeah, that's. And you still win by making zombies. Yeah, like um, I, again, that's that whole. That's that whole inevitability. Yeah, uh, your opponent's gonna run themselves out of cards at some point if you can just stabilize the board, mm -hmm. and every land you draw turns into a body. Yeah. So I, I or bodies or bodies. Yeah. yeah. I think like you made the comment. I think it was last week, and you probably made it a couple of times tonight too. Is it's that the deck is very well positioned. Yeah. There's there's like we said, there was only three cards we could come up with to really stop the interaction. And it's it's basically a, and it's like, like two red closer. cards, which are like so narrow. Yeah. You know. You don't want to play it against anything else in the format, okay. really. Um, or you don't even really want to play it anyways. And then Ashiok, which is, of course, good. Yep. Um, but it's a good deck, and, like, it's very hard to interact with. Yep. Frustrates the hell out of me when I play it. <laughs> um, and I think you lose Scapeshift, but I think you, you'll get another ramp spell or two in the next set. And it, yeah, I, there's usually I one, think the one deck's one playable that still. comes out. There's almost always a ramp spell yeah. in every... Now, interesting, yeah. started thinking about it earlier, and somebody made the comment, this is like, there's a bunch of four or five color lists playing out there, uh, playing red. So uh, they, using Golos? Yeah, you use Golos. Yeah. So, um, so again, the, talk about losing ramp. Yeah, so you lose a ramp spell and you lose scape shift. You could move over to Golos. And it turns He's out... still that, finds, he finds Field of the Dead, right? He finds Field of the Dead, yeah. yeah. And um, it actually turns out, so there's a list... Uh, Gotta plug him because of course oh, everybody knows man, everyone it. plugging other people. Yeah, um, Trey had to plug someone else. Yeah, too. but uh, so Ali Trazi has a Golos deck that does not play Scape Shift, so it is actually just Golos Steel of the Dead, and it's very well suited for the fact that you play all five colors. Mm -hmm. um, you do get your effects off of Golos, so you're casting some extra things in there. It was a couple of different cards, but like on that note, back here to the um, what's the simple effects? It's like you talk about Alpine Moon. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a one mana red spell. Uh, you could theoretically, if you're playing like say a five color deck, if you're playing like Rubon Craig right now or Stomping Ground, uh, you could play Alpine Moon in your own list to yeah. turn off your opponent yeah. if you absolutely had to. If you think it's really that good, um, and then remember, you can bounce the Alpine Moon with your Teferi. Mm -hmm. So when you go to Scape Shift, you can actually bounce the Alpine Moon with your Teferi, Scape Shift, play the Alpine Moon back down, and then you've. Uh, more or less. Draw an extra card. And you, you draw on a card, okay. you're casting escape shift, so you're getting your zombies, and then you're locking your opponent out from their field of the dead. If they yep. don't have, and they don't have instant speed interaction at that point because of Lilith the Fairy. Yep. So there are some interesting things that you can do if you so choose to, and I think if you're playing a Golo style deck, mm -hmm. that it's actually more viable that way. Yeah. So, so in conclusion, absolutely build the deck. <laughs> if you want to play it, it's a cool deck, it's fun, it's yeah. really well positioned right now. And I think it survives rotation, and we don't even know what's in the next set. And there is a Gates list. And okay, there's a Gates version. There's a Gates version that's that's so playing this. That's, that's going to be a lot more budget than the yeah. Expeditions version. Yeah, you could. Yeah, <laughs> yes. But like the things that you lose, the lands. Yeah. You do have your lands available to yeah. you. So sure, they're always tapped. Well, but and we'll lose the check lands come rotation, but we're going to gain something in Eldrain. Like, yeah, we and always gain a, a rare land cycle, so don't worry about color fixing. And I think right the other now. thing too is that so you're losing the check lands, but you've got temples now that you're not utilizing in here. Yep. You also have a bunch of you have all your duels for your guild gates. Um, Circus route finds guild gates or basic lands. So the thing to note mm -hmm. is that we have a finite number of uh, guild gates in here because we're playing so many other checks. Lands. You could easily replace checks with. Temples and or gates. Yeah, some and in some numbers. It would slow sense. down, but but at you that know. point you also have gates ablaze mm -hmm. to to say why we don't same. have a board wipe. Yes, so very true. Yep. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Uh, we talked about the deck, the sideboarding, and talked about it's going to survive rotation. So thanks for watching, everyone. You got to like the video. You got to yeah. comment in the comment section below. Yep. Subscribe to the channel. Follow us on Twitter at LibertyMTG. And uh, what, what am I missing? I uh, guess. That's it, right? Yeah. Did I miss any other plugs? All right, thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs>